You can't go anywhere, they locked a fucking door. <laughs> so anyway, I've counted and I think, how many, how many mugs have we got going here? Uh, 14 still? Four, uh, 13. 13. So two people aren't going to get mugs, so we're probably going to be handing out uh, mugs and shirts to the same uh, lucky winners. <laughs> So anyway, uh, I don't know if anybody is, uh, doesn't know me. Uh, I've spent like 60 years in the industry. I started about four years old, standing on a stool, scrubbing play fields. Uh, my dad ran an arcade on 8th and Hennepin for years, and later 6th Hennepin. Uh, my mother bought SS Billiards of My Hope in September of 72, which I've been doing that now for 46 years. Uh, for about 22 years, I've been helping people online uh, fix their games and stuff. In uh, Barry Amusements, I don't know, eight or 10 years which morphed into Planetary Pinball Supply, which also I've um, been helping Chicago Gaming now for a few years. And also I've been working for Jersey Jack Pinball on Tech Sport 2 for five and a half years. So, and I don't know everything. There's nobody that I wouldn't ever be conceited to ever think I know everything. But I've blown enough crap up that I can hopefully save other people the same mistakes I've made. So anyway, we may as well get right into it. Anybody got any really great questions? Yes, sir, what's your name? Oh, the reason I'm asking is because sometimes the audio doesn't always go through on these recordings, so I'll probably repeat some of the stuff so we got good recordings. Yes, sir. Um, hi, Dave. Everybody say hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Oh, yeah, my life is, uh, my life and times is a lover and a tech support. No, I've, I can't go anywhere without an adventure, and I, I've often thought of writing down. I had a friend told me in 1994 that, you know, you've forgotten more fun than most people have ever had. I can't go anywhere without, uh, you know, crashing a car, motorcycle, blowing stuff up. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of, I've been fortunate, I've been blessed. I've had a lot of really cool things happen in my life. And, and also, I've often kidded, too, about the uh, chapters to be, be filled in after I'm gone when the statute of limitations and stuff doesn't matter. But no, I've I've uh, I've kicked around. I just it's been more of a gag though than actually doing it. You know, my my main goal when I started uh, when I had web TV on the uh, my first thing on Red Games Pinball many years ago was just trying to make my little corner of pinball a little bit better. That's and and again, anything I do always blossoms and blooms and grows and gets way out of hand, and that's what it's gotten a life of its own. So, which would you like, sir, a mug or a shirt? Here, give him a shirt, too. I'll make sure it doesn't see it. Yeah, don't let him see what it says. Yes, sir. Actually, you know, I don't want to say anything disparaging about any other manufacturers or anything, but I was a test, oh, and also besides my, in my previous history, until Williams closed, I was a test operator for Lieberman Music Company for 19 years, too. And people today are spoiled. You know, you buy a, a Williams A title pin or whatever nowadays, and by now it's gone through collector's hands, it's been tweaked, it's been fixed, stuff has been replaced. I never, ever had a game coming out of the box. I didn't spend two, three days, uh, you know, tweaking crap and discovering what was never put in a game and things like that. And honestly, uh, even my experiences with Stern in the mid-2000s, like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and stuff, Stern out of the box is way better than anything Williams ever did. And my experience with the majority of the manufacturers now, especially when you consider when these things are bounced around the back of a truck, uh, you know, to and fro, uh, I'm surprised there's not more with them. You know, I think our, from all the manufacturers, I think our quality is an all-time high. I mean, is, there's going to be no such thing as a perfect pin, you know, and, you know, crap can happen in transit. And even, you know, sometimes, you know, crap can just happen. A new part can fail. And then that's where the manufacturers of the tech support and stuff get you up and running as quick as they can. It is unfortunate if you just unbox your game and set it up and uh, they forget to, like you got three legs instead of four or they didn't send a power cord with. But like I say, you know, the people on the assembly line aren't pinball people. You know, they're, they're assembling and then they go home. And, but I think, you know, on a whole, I think all the manufacturers today uh, are doing a way better job than they were back in the 90s and 80s. Do we give him anything? Oh, do you want a shirt or a mug? Yeah, give him a shirt too. Well, I'm not dragging this shit back home. 
Hey, and if nothing else, they make really cool cleaning towels. Hey, that's our old friend Dave Marston. Say hi to Dave. Hi, Dave. Dave is one of the few human beings that's been to Expo every year. Of course, he never goes home either, so it's easy, but... Hey, Dave, would you like a mug? We better give Dave a mug. He's too small for a t-shirt, though. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for all you've done through Expo and for all the shows and stuff through the years, too. Dave, I don't know if anybody's researched Dave Mars or anything either, but he's done a lot of shows and a lot of things and always been around. I just, I know he's probably one of the few guys that's been to every Expo, outside of Rob Burke, but, you know, he has to be here. <laughs> it's like flypaper? What? What'd you say? Did you say it's like flypaper? Wow. Oh, wait, excuse me one second. We had one over here. Yes, sir. If it fits on there, yeah, look up the motherboard, whatever manufacturer you got, and a processor on there, and whatever's on there, you know, to swap it. And be sure you, you know, ground yourself first. Uh, don't get anything near that uh, CPU or the motherboard with static. Even if you don't feel it, you know, down the road you might have weird stuff. That's why people don't understand what a game ROMs and stuff. All of a sudden, you know, like a few years go by, you start having some weird problems, and well, nobody touched the metal plate or anything when they put the change at ROM, and you know, it comes back to haunt you. Would you like a mug or a shirt? Gee, I don't know. That's a tough question. Yeah, you better give them one of each. Kind of like when we got a somebody who wants both. Well, besides inventing really cool pinball stuff, Robert's my helper, too. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Oh, and when you, when you put that fan in and you blow the piss out of your game, you want to call 732-364-9900, extension 1222. And don't wait for a voicemail. Just every once in a while, try it until you get our service manager, Frank Becker. Talk to him live. Don't blame me. <laughs> I told him that after we gave him the shirt. I'm the, who is next here, the lady? Yes, ma'am. Well, the guy next to you looks kind of shady, but <laughs> I saw him at the circus earlier this year. The bearded lady. Uh, Midwest Gaming Classic. You know, I'm not sure. You know, that's a really tough time of the year. I don't like doing shows in spring. You know, we still got the crappy weather. It's cold, and my business is really good. And Chicago Gaming sent me to Texas Pinball Festival. And then three weeks later, Doug Scorga, when he was still with Chicago Gaming, called me up and, geez, can you help us out? Because that got all came together like a week and a half before. And the way it turned out this year was nice because we had two feet of snow in my area. And I wouldn't have had any business anyway. But it's really a poor time of the year to close for anything. And also, I'm not sure if they're going to do Midwest Gaming Classic next year. I, I've always loved the show. I was at their last year of Conemowoc. I was at the first year of Greenfield. And the every, shows are known for different things. But you walk in there, the gamers add such a level of excitement. You walk in there, there's like electricity in the air. I've always loved that show. It's just a bad time of the year for me. And now uh, Midwest Gaming, uh, Chicago Gaming did that this year because actually Expo was up in the air. We weren't even sure if Expo was going to happen. So they decided to do that, but I don't know if they're going to go back or not, and then that would also hinge on whether I go back or not. I mean, if I had a choice, I would love to, but I really shouldn't. You know, because my business is closed when I'm somewhere else, and you know, it, it, it all counts up. Would you like a, a shirt or a mug? Yeah, give her a shirt, too. Until we start running out of stuff. Well, I like to let them think they had a choice. Yes, sir. Kingpin. Kingpin was always my favorite game. I I rarely ever get to play. I really suck at playing. People come into my place and think I'm like the world class tournament player. And I rarely ever play. And when I do, I, I freely admit it. I suck. On Pinside one time, somebody posted, what's your least favorite part of pinball? And I was like, gravity. 
If it's coming at me, it's going away. Multi-ball, yeah, I need a contest to see how quick I could drain more than one ball off the play field. But I have always, always loved playing Mark Ritchie's Capcom Kingpin. I just love that game. And I owned part of one years ago, which has gone away a long time ago. But uh, you know, now that the Circus Maximus group is going to re- you know, bring it back so they can fund their pinball circus machine, I was like, score! I still might be able to have one again, because like the last one changed hands for 60 grand, even if I had money, which I don't. But even if I had money, that ain't happening. But uh, oh, I would love if they do Kingpin. And I mean, there, there's a lot of great rumor stuff. I generally stay out of those, though. Like Doug Score, uh, when they were starting to remakes, told me that they're working on 10 titles, but he can't tell me what. I was like, I don't want to know. He's like, really? Well, yeah. If it leaks, it wasn't me. I didn't know. You know, the same like with Stern. You know, if you uh, work for a competitor or contract for a competitor, they don't want you in the building. But that's, there's two sides to that, too. The same thing. Anything leaks wasn't me. I was never there. So, did you want a shirt or a mug? A mug me. <laughs> oh, okay. We're just going to give him a shirt. We're starting to run out of mugs. Now you better give him one of each. Well, that, that's one they've been working on. It, it is an original. They found an NOS playfield. That's what's in there. But you notice it's got the bigger display on it and stuff. So, yes, sir. I never cared about it. I mean, I know a lot of people love that thing, and they, they're caught up on the theme, and I hope it gets produced, and I hope there's support out there for it so you're not buying a game that as soon as it dies, it's a brick. But I've just... I've, I've played it a couple times, and I just, I think that people are just overwhelmed, like, the, the big Lebowski. You know, I thought the gameplay sucked. Of course, again, I'm not a great player or anything. I'm not, in that, you know, okay, let's use the Gottlieb uh, strikes and spares uh, pins under here, but miniaturize them. So if you think the Gottlieb ones were a pain in the ass to work on, wait till you got to replace a pin or something or worked on that goddamn thing. I don't know who invents this shit, but... I mean, the only thing that's got going for it is the, uh, you know, what is it, the Black Russian and the uh, bowling alley. I mean, on, on you get a cool rug, too. Like, you can't go to Target and buy a rug. And especially, you know, the one they had here at Expo, I think it was just like the movie, too. I think somebody peed on it. Yeah, sorry. And, you know, I, I hope uh, some way the project comes together. I hope, you're, you know, you get your game. Yeah, I wouldn't wish anything bad on anybody. I mean, but see, unfortunately, we had a history in, uh, of things going on. Uh, Gene announces a Big Bang Bar project, and that was totally screwed up just about every inch of the way, but he did get them done, and he lost two, three grand easily a unit. And, and I think people got caught up in that. And then uh, Jack came along, he's going to build Wizard of Oz's, which again was the trial and tribulation, but he did get it done. And I think a lot of people got caught up in that when these other things, Predator comes along and Babadoo comes along. I think a lot of people got caught up in that anybody that says they can do something is going to do it. And, you know, a lot of these people, then they might have the best intentions or the companies might have the best uh, plan and everything else. But, you know, you always run into these little things like it's going to be two years till we get one out the door and we got, you know, money rolling out of here left and right and stuff. And, you know, it, it's tough to plan for an industry, and a lot of them just didn't have the backing and stuff. But like I say, I hope whatever they, you know, somebody pulls a project together and does, you know, people get their games. And because obviously you like it, I hope you get it. I don't want to see anybody get screwed. And the other side of the coin, too, is, the, you know, the people that have lost money on some of the other things, you know, that's like two, three million dollars easily that went out of the hobby, out of the industry and stuff. That's a big dent in anything in a, in a small niche market. Would you like a mug or a shirt? Both. Hey, I like when we get both. I was married to one. You don't want to do that. Well, actually, she's only half Russian. Oh, wait one second. There's Jared. Everybody say hi to Jared. Hey, Jared, are, are you running the Stern thing tomorrow night? Um, running it? Well, I, I, I know you're a big part of Stern, and I love all the things you do. But I know a couple... Yeah. And I'm, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, you know, the, the uh, epic event and stuff I know was a lot of your doing. And that's why I was just hoping tomorrow night's get together had your finger on it somewhere. Yeah, no, no monkeys, no contortionists. Uh, yeah, we're going to, you know, somebody's taking it down a notch. We'll just party. But it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of cool stuff. And uh, the way that they sort of sorted out the schedule this year, we'll have sort of a series of stern seminars leading up. Yeah, to that I liked.
Hello, everybody say hello. Hi, glad you can make it. Anyway, excuse me, Jared. Mm -hmm. Are you still, you know, what, what was your title, so like social marketing uh, director or something? Okay, social media. Yeah, if anybody ever wants to, any info or anything on Stern, Jared's your man. He is really cool. Not to mention the world's largest Nerf battles and uh, all these other great things he does. Thank you, Jared. Do, do you want a mug or a shirt? Well, the shirts are 2XL. Well, no. No, no, but you're big in the shoulders. I don't know if a 2XL. Yeah, we better. I got it. Because I've always loved Jared and I love all the stuff he does. He's a great man. And Well, yeah, the yeah the strip mall is uh, completed in November of '70, and that was one of the original tenants. My involvement is from September '72, which I'm sure there's an older arcade or two throughout the world, but I'm probably yeah yeah. Well, and also I'm probably the oldest under single ownership. You know, it's just over 46 years now. Yeah. Oh, there goes the people coming to visit. Thanks, Jared. <laughs> uh, just a second. We had a couple more over here, too. Anyway, Jared, thank you. Thank you for all you do, especially being directly involved with Stern. I really love that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Thank you, Jared. Uh, let's see, we had, I'm forget, was it, yes, sir? You know, not really uh, now. You know, I've never really had the problem pinball players. I mean, like during the video fad days, you know, we had a fair amount of uh, idiots. And about the only bad thing with pool, like when the Color of Money movie came out, I went through more fluorescent lights that year than... Oh, I would just love to, you know, give Tom Cruise a wedgie and kick him in the nuts. You know, because every moron that cannot shoot one or two balls in at a time can spin a pool cue. Uh, so, but I, I, and of course, I'm too old to babysit people. I, I often laugh when people come in, hey, you ever been held up? Hey, you've seen how I treat people I like. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? You know, and I have been not there working for my dad and stuff. I have had guns pulled on me. I have been shot at. It didn't impress me. You know, so you come in and my place think you're going to fuck around. You got another thing coming. Did you want to, we got to watch it. We got enough left here. Uh oh, we only got four mugs. And plus we got a couple more questions that way. Did you want a mug or a shirt? Mug. Better give them a mug in case if we start running out of stuff. Let's see, uh, I'm not sure who was next. I don't want to do this out of order. I don't want to piss anybody off. Do you have a preference? Animal, sheep, mineral? I mean, sheep can't yell rape. Sheep cannot say no. Well, I guess you're it. What's your question, sir? Uh, well, my, my own personal opinion, again, I'm not a great player. Uh, you know, I love the way the industry's gone. You know, pinball never had a fad. Video games did have a fad. Pinball rode with. All of a sudden, 50,000 arcades open up in one year, extra arcades, 
and they couldn't all get the latest Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, Asteroids, whatever. And pinballs went along with that because they'd take up the space of two video games. So you know, operators would buy a pinball machine or two, and then as soon as they could uh, get the video game they wanted, you know, the pinballs would go out. But pinballs always grown by leaps and bounds. You know, it was mechanical. Then they put a battery in there. Then they put a power cord on it. You know, then they put a back box on it. You know, then you had uh, little numbers that light up, 10, 5, 10, 20, 30, whatever the hell. And, you know, and, and then you had pop bumpers. Then you had pop bumpers that actually worked. You know, you had flippers. You had, thanks to the great Steve Kordick, you had flippers put in the right place. Uh, you know, you know, you had score reels, you had all the dummy score reels, you had all the fake scoring. You know, eventually you had the little Dixie narco tubes, you know, eventually we were starting to put and my my greatest thing when they were going solid state, that's gonna cut down on maintenance. I was like, yeah, right, it's still a pinball machine. You're just sneaking a board in there. You're gonna you're creating more problems. And but then we eventually, you know, we got into the uh, you know, numeric, the alphanumeric, the uh, multi-level play fields. Uh, DMDs, you know, pinball never had a fad, but it's always grown by leaps. And I think Jersey Jack Pinball, Jack Garnieri, I think, you know, it's probably one of the ones with the Wizard of Oz, all of a sudden we got a big monitor and a little one in a crystal ball and things like that. That was a big leap. And I think a lot of the companies have followed suit with that. You know, Stern has uh, done great things with uh, their displays and stuff. You know, the American Pinball is doing it. I mean, the, you know, pinball, pinball has to grow. And I, I think it's gone in a lot of great directions. And I think it's still growing. I think it's still evolving. But I, I really like where it's come from. Do you like a mug or a shirt? I don't know if we're going to have enough, so I've got to slow down on that. If we've got any left over, you can grab something off table once left. Uh-oh, give him a mug. And then we had this nice gentleman over there. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I heard the, the most famous person. I didn't catch the rest of that. Who's the most? Oh, there's been a lot. Todd McCulloch's been in there. Uh, Ed from Bare Naked Ladies. Uh, Rody from Aerosmith. I mean, I, I don't know if I've ever, you know, because everybody's the same to me. Lot, you know, but you behave yourself, whether you spend a quarter, you spend a hundred bucks, you know, everybody's the same to me. So I can't say that I've really kept track of, uh, you know, stars or anything. The only reason I you know, meet some of them, like uh, Ed when he was up here, you know, we went out, uh, my internet provider was there, and we went out and had, uh, where we go, Perkins or something, had dinner. And then I took him back to his hotel and stuff. You know, I'm typically noon to midnight every day, but when traveling people are an important part of my business, and if they need to get in early, if they need to get in late, if they need to be picked up at the airport, if they need to be hauled back to a hotel, I usually try to figure something out. But, you know, I have, I have had, you know, famous people in there, and you know, we had one guy that was went over and held up a grocery store and shot a guy to death. I had that guy. Uh, one, of my, one of my old time personal favorites, uh, I probably shouldn't mention names, but our eight time convicted felon, I always liked him. He was great though, when he'd uh, would help my internet provider move games. He had a low uh, cube truck that we had to, you know, back a video game up to. And this guy would stand in there, pick him up and pull him in. Hey, that's like 325 pounds, and this guy did And he apologized to me. I think I'll go to Hernia. I've been moving a little slow tonight. <laughs> Just, okay, you're picking up 300-pound things and throwing them around like, and I'm always going to be polite to you. <laughs> Would you like a mug or a shirt? Uh-oh. Two more. Two more. Just one second. Oh, excuse me. I want to catch Dave since he's on the front row here. Yes? So I've seen a couple mentioned in the past year of the new arcade opening in your city? There's been a couple. Well, you know, this was going on in Detroit like a decade ago. And everybody's like, ooh, whoa, pinball's coming back. Ah! And then two or three years go by and they feed on themselves and uh, they disappear and nobody says anything. Would you know, make it more of a pinball mecca that they can go there and go to SMC? Well, it's two different crowds. You know, it is a barcade. Not everybody's into the bar scene. And a lot of people, see, where they usually feed on themselves, a lot of people go there because you can play for cheap. But then, you know, when you start adding up what you blow on the expensive drinks, expensive food, you had to park three, four blocks away, all of a sudden, old Lloyd don't seem so bad. So it's a, it's a you know, and I like, I like to see pinball growing. I wouldn't wish them anything bad. I, I hope they thrive and stuff. It's just, well, there was insert coins in the warehouse district a few years ago. 
and they put in millions of dollars. I, I don't believe they had pinball, but they had like 30 classic arcade games and all the new high tech uh, where you wear the uh, goggles, 3D bowling. I mean, it's just a it multi million dollar operation. And they changed format twice. Yeah, they made it two years. Because, you know, your people that are playing for cheap ain't drinking, and your people are drinking or subsidizing the gameplay. And it usually feeds on itself. I hope not. Like I say, uh, I wouldn't even wish an enemy a bad time. You never screw with how a guy makes a living. But, uh, you know, you know, barcades, uh, you know, they've been around in different areas, and they get hot for a while, and they usually disappear. And you already got a mug, so sorry. Anyway, I, 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 and I missed a guy. Oh, back there with a hat. Yes, sir. I didn't know it was broke. Uh, or is it running right now? Yeah, it's been on the on the on the uh, floor for years. Uh, you know, back in the mid 2000s when everything went to hell, and I sold an equipment trying to stay open. And hindsight is 2020. I should have raised my price per play sooner. But uh, you know, when I started running out of equipment, he's been on the floor ever since. It wasn't that he's broke. I used to just bring him in for special events. But then, like I say, you know, the first uh, 50 cent pin was Black Knight in 81. And when I did finally, uh, which was funny in itself, I had been thinking of raising prices for some time. Uh, but when I finally did it, my internet provider, he loves to scrounge up information. He found a U.S. government cost of living index, you know, year by year by year by year. He said, do you know you should have gone to 75 cents a game in 1991 to have the same buying power? And I was like, see, I always thought, you know, like from, you know, like, Adam's family to medieval man is some of the greatest pinball machines ever made were there, but the player base was decimated. And I was wrong. The players were there, the money they were spending was worth half as much. And you don't realize it, you know, your food goes up uh, 10%, you know, your gas goes up 20%, your rent goes up 10%, but you're taking and go, you don't really see what's happening. In hindsight, so I was 2020, and I knew I was losing ground. Well, all the operators were. You now they're slowing down buying equipment, distributors are slowing down ordering, manufacturers are coming back in production. Well, by 95, 96, we're on a roller coaster to hell, and there's just no putting the brakes on then. Do we get you a mug or a hat? Uh oh, we got two mugs left. Okay, just, just excuse me one second here. Did you want a mug or a shirt? Oh, hey Rob, get back here. Yeah, put that mug back. And bear in mind too, I don't know every, everything in the known planet. Most of my, whatever I talk about, you know, from my own personal experience, other people have got different ones. Anyway, guy in the red shirt, what's your question? Wait, how old are you? Oh man, I don't think you can be in here. <laughs> you sure, sure as heck can't have a shirt or a mug. Anyway, what's your question, sir? Um, what's your name? Bill. Bill, hi Bill, thanks for coming, Bill. Um, how did you end up with the Bill Paxton pinball machine? Uh, the right place at the right time when we were doing that refresh, Chris that ran that, uh, come up with the idea and ran it, uh, he had done some voice uh, work for uh, Ben Heckendorn. So we kind of had a foot in the door when uh, that uh, project, when Ben decided, uh, I don't know if he burned out or what, but he, he, gave, he tried to sell and then he gave away his Playfield Rotisserie, and then he decided to build, you know, sell Bill Paxton, which like I say, I think we are just at the right place at the right time. And unfortunately now more recently, we uh, hear about half a year ago, no, it was probably about four months ago, uh, we got to reprogram the CPU again. Well, the first time when we had that, uh, my friend Jim Seamers did that for me. He was on the phone with Ben Heckendorn and uh, got the software and we reprogrammed it. Everything's all hunky-dory. Well, we got to do that again. Well, the time when Jim did that, he unplugged my micro uh, USB cord that I loaned him and there's a little green board on the processor went with. And we didn't realize at the time he had that. Then he moves to Chicago. Then he can't find it because in moving, everything got... But now, I just talked to him today, and he did find it. But he might not be at the show tomorrow. But if he doesn't come back, he's going to come back to Minnesota at some point and reprogram it. But I've also thought of just putting it in a storage for right now because it's kind of lost the wow factor. And Ben Heckendorn said, too, he was amazed it's lasted this long. It was not built for commercial use. So anyway, that's how we ended up with Bill. Did, would you like a shirt or a hat uh, mug? Uh-oh. Yeah, don't let them see this side. <laughs> well, 
Well, originally I was going to have a separate mug. I survived the LTG show and then that, but I didn't have the budget this year to do a separate mug, so, and we don't have enough to go around, so that's where we're at. Uh oh, last mug. Thank you for helping, Martin. Yes, sir. What's, what's your name? Oren. Oh, Oren Day. Everybody underground now. Sorry, I didn't, you know, looking down to this perspective, I, I forgot. I mean, Oren has been uh, in the pinball industry forever. Wasn't your claim to fame Twister? One of them. One of them. Uh, Oren's worked for the, some of the, what is uh, Sega? Sega, Data, Data East, Stern, and, yeah. what's the difference? Yeah. Oren's been around forever, and he's a really a great guy. You ever want to meet somebody, he's well worth the time, really cool to talk to. Yes, sir? So I have a positive question, and you can follow up with the negative response if you want. I would never do that. I mean, your, your, your last girlfriend was so fat that she was invaded by a militia, and now she's known as the Republic of Your Girlfriend. <laughs> okay, now we got so, that out of the way. What's your question? So what game have you operated over your illustrious career that has been the most pleasant earnings surprise? Gauntlet. Gauntlet. You could just keep shoving money into that thing. That thing was gold. Most people paid for their gauntlets in like seven days. And what was your surefire success game that you loved and bought and it didn't make any money at all? Well, you know, a lot of these games, you know, I, well, I, when I was a test operator for Lieberman Music Company for 19 years, but I always bought the game. You know, because I thought, you know, if I'm getting the game for free and then give it back, it's not a fair test. You know, if I told you a game was good, you know, it was good, and if I told you it sucked, it sucked. One that I thought really had potential, and of course, again, I'm not you know, a great video game player. There's only two I could ever play, Wizard of War and Pole Position. But one I thought would, uh, maybe not the next Pac-Man or anything, but I thought, you know, Midway's War Gods I thought was pretty good. That one what didn't even become what I would refer to as a 30-day wonder. That thing was dead in the water before it started. And as f of all the things, I'm not sure who to design that game, but uh, his mother and another lady stopped into my business. And she asked me, you know, hey, how's that game doing? I said, it sucks. I said, that thing's the worst piece of shit that was ever made. And, well, maybe you don't have it in the right location. I was like, lady, this room's 1,800 square feet. Where would you advise I moved a fucking thing? But, and there, there's been some lemons through the years. I mean, because testing, I often got games. I took them whether I liked them or not. And for me, too, I'm not passionate about this. No matter how much I think a, a game is great or how much I love it or anything else, it's always going to come down to the cash box for me. So yeah. how about pinballs? How about pinballs well, for that question? You know, I, I did not buy every pinball machine. You know, because when, when I buy a video game back when things were, times were good, when I buy a video game, my gross goes up. You buy a pinball machine, your gross don't move. You're just moving money around the room. Yeah. So I can't say that I ever really had a dog or anything. You know, I did test a lot of pinball machines, but, you know, as you're, you know with, uh, without the gross going up or down, it's just kind of hard to tell if I ever had it. I mean, there's some I didn't buy for reasons. Uh, one of my least favorite things to work on was Rudy's Head, and Roadshow had two of them and you gotta take Ted out to get to red. I thought, I don't care if that's the greatest game in the world, I ain't touching it. And then I was supposed to test uh, Gilligan's Island, and when I went out to pick it up, uh, they had it plugged in, and that little buddy, little buddy, little buddy, I thought, man, if I hear this fucking thing, I'm gonna be killing people by five o'clock. <laughs> that, that one stayed at the distributor, that one did not come home. And then there's been some too, like at the height of the Pac-Man craze, when Pac-Man was the greatest, I had a cocktail table one, and at the height of Pac-Man, I didn't have any. I noticed a problem with that. Somebody would come in, they get two bucks for the quarters, they put a buck seventy-five on a glass, they'd be playing a game. People would walk in, oh, somebody's playing it, we won't get on it, they'd leave. And I thought, damn, that thing's costing me money. So as an experiment, I put it in the trunk of my car and I hauled it home for a few days. And then people would come in, oh, they don't have Pac-Man. Oh, what else do they got? They'd stay and spend money. Pac-Man went, and, and of course, at the beginning, you cannot get Pac-Man. You know, they were, the distributors were way behind on orders and everything else, and especially a cocktail table one. That thing was gold. They were happier in hell to have that come walking back in. So, I mean, there's been different surprises through the years, too. Things that worked out, things that didn't. Did you want a mug or a, or wait, did we give, or, no, did we give you anything yet? No, not yet. Did you want a not mug this or, year. <laughs> did you want a mug or a shirt? I'll take a mug. Uh-oh, our last mug. There she goes. 
We might, we might have to give IOUs. I still got a few I was saving for tomorrow, but they're not here. And we only got one shirt left. Shit. Hey, Robert, you want to run up to my room and grab some more mugs? I'm sorry? Uh-oh. Hey, we, we can sit here and tell dirty stories when uh, Robert can go get some more mugs. Is everybody okay with that? Pardon? Or not? You don't? Uh, what the... What the fuck are you babbling back there? Oh, I thought you meant whether Robert went up and got mugs or not. I thought, what the fuck? I'm doing a fine job, sir. You notice I'm the one with the microphone? Do they give a shit? <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, cut open, probably grab a whole layer. Nine more? I think that should be about able. We can do some more questions and answers. Yeah since somebody's opposed to my telling any more stories. Hey Lloyd, what do you think about the punch out and the super punch out back in the 80s? Let's see, I don't, I don't think I ever had a super punch out. I love punch out, I had the two monitor yeah, one. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Damn, yep. damn good game. That's a damn good. Yep, good earner, a lot of fun. Had a good following. The only thing of that uh, that kind of didn't do good, Sega had that uh, real heavy duty one, it was like on six casters, and you had those big handles and you had a literally box. That was a great idea. I sold more pop in those weeks than ever before, but you literally had to take the circuit board out of there and re-solder everything on it like once a week. So that, that only made it about six weeks in my arcade, but that thing hauled in money and my pop sales went through the roof. Yeah, I never got. Yeah, I usually stayed away from the kits and the uh, conversions and stuff up until about the time when we were having like Mortal Kombat 4 and Killer Instinct 2, and they were pooping out games so quick. And I called them, you know, like 30 Day Wonders, and they made a great game for conversion. Like I put a, a police trainer kit in uh, my Killer Instinct 2, and uh, that game was in my top five for like a, almost a decade. You know, and I had the head of Sega stop by one time. That was right, right before Jurassic Park was uh, shipping, the sit-down Jurassic Park. And he was asking about games and stuff. And I asked him, I said, you know, because they had come out with, uh, God, what was it? They had just come out with, uh, I think it was House of the Dead or something that they made. And uh, I might be wrong on the title, but he, you know, it was like, you know, like too expensive. I said, you know, you got a Virtua Fighter board in there you got a generic power supply and a monitor, and you got a $2,000 cabinet, and there's no way in hell to justify the price on this. I said, yeah, well, and also, like Sega, you know, when I got that virtual, sit-down virtual racer that was originally supposed to be in a Formula One body, I get this big, huge fiberglass thing that's the size of a pool table, and they put a Sonic the Hedgehog decal on it and charged 10 grand extra. Yeah, I love that one. But anyway, I was telling the guy from Sega, why don't you make me a cheap kit? Police trainer was like 1,300 bucks, and it's in my top five all the time. If you make me a cheap kit that I can make money on, I can afford to buy your high price shit. Well, we made a kit, nobody bought it. Well, yeah, a soccer kit. That was real popular in America back then. And it was a $5,000 kit. I said, did you see a problem with that? Yeah, and this clown, well, the Liebermans had their uh, fall show, and uh, I said, play in the sit down uh, Jurassic Park. He comes in, sits down, tells me all what to do and everything. And their Tyrannosaurus Rex is chasing us in the Jeep, and it grabs his guy and hauls him off and eats him. And he's like, shoot him, shoot him. I'm like, why? I don't like you. <laughs> And then I pointed a gun at him too, bing, bing, bing. You know, this don't work, I need a better gun. Yeah, the manufacturers always love me. I like panhandling them too. I had the head of Midway uh, comes in, or the, uh, Will, the, one of the guys from Williams, wasn't Midway, it was Williams. And I had my donation jar on the counter. I always had some scam running, the Muffy Fund, the Bigger Speaker Fund, something. And I asked him, uh, you know, did you know your contributions to the fund are tax deductible? So he digs around, he's gonna give me a couple of quarters. I was like, 
Well, the guy from Sega gave me a dollar. So he digs out his wallet, puts a five in, and then the, 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 my uh, sales rep from the distributor is with, and he's just ready to crawl under the table. He's like, oh my God, I gotta go back and listen to this now. And well, why'd you bring him to see me to begin with? And I always loved when these guys would come visit, like when they have a Williams pinball school one night. I had an obnoxious drunk come in the last thing, and he was complaining about high scores on games, accusing me of setting them. Yeah, after, the, after I'm done for the day, I sit here, take the glass off, and play with a play field for an hour to put up a high score. Really? You really think that I do this? And, you know, I get up early the next morning, run out to the distributor, because I'm supposed to go to the damn operator school. And, uh, you know, usually there's always screwed up. The game wouldn't be there. The manual wouldn't be there. There's always some kind of hell going on. And finally, the uh, instructor shows up. It hung over. It was that moron. Oh, God, you just can't make this shit up. Anyway, I had another question. Yes, sir? Can we turn off the lights so that we scare Roger when he comes back? Roger who? I mean, was it Robert, sorry. The helper. Yeah, everybody left. And then we all hop up and yell, surprise, exactly. happy birthday. Yes. Nah. All right. You know, he's young and he's a good guy, and I've already been pretty hard on him. So, so there's lots of uh, discussions out there about the arcade uh, one-up, which are the little tiny ones you can buy at, at uh, Walmart, Best Buy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I've seen them. I've not played with them or anything. Do you feel that that will be a positive uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter anymore. The okay. thing that really fucked us right up the ass was when video <laughs> games were coming out. Your muffs, buddy. And, uh, well, I told me he didn't belong in here. Is no, that your good, kid? No, he's good. Yes. You know, that's like he's, child, my, he's my helper. That's like child endangerment or something. You could be arrested. I, I like to think I'm broadening his horizons. <laughs> yeah. Go home and tell your mom about how broad your horizon is now. Don't do that. <laughs> but... Uh, no, but uh, so many times, and uh, we were begging for a time frame. You know, a video game would come out, and a month later you could play it at home. And like Michael ja uh, uh, Sega's Michael Jackson Moonwalker was available on the home market first. It's like, we can't swallow this crap. We're paying for the development. We can't swallow this crap this fast. But not like I say now, now I don't think it matters. I mean, the coin-op industry is just gone. You know, half the Golden Tea lives do good, half don't. Buck hunters have died. Touchscreens are dead. You know, the, you know, e tunes or whatever is not doing good. Hey, that. Did we get you a mug or a shirt? I'm good. I'm no, good. you, but the other other guy. No, I'm good. Oh, he's good too. Oh, my room key. Hey, you guys missed it before when I had that sex offender here that I didn't know was a sex offender. This guy was into pandas. And, uh, yeah, that was my uh, seminar, I think, it was on Thursday night then. I'm not sure, but anyway. Uh, I hadn't slept for two days, drove here, uh, did the stuff all day. About midnight I go up and I try to get some sleep, and he went to stay with somebody else that night, supposedly relatives in the area, I hope. But anyway... Uh, I wake up about 1.15, I just got a killer headache, and I'm, you know, I didn't turn the light on, I'm debating if I try to lay back down or if I need an Advil, and I'm sitting there in a bed, and I'm looking over in the dimly lit room, and there's nine pandas lined up staring at me. Jesus Christ. And then, of course, I did not know this clown's history, and, you know, I was like, oh my God, Two years I've crossed state lines with a registered sex offender. If we get pulled over for a traffic ticket, I could you could be coming to my arcade and seeing this red tag on there, no children allowed or something. I mean, you you did not think of letting me know this crap, but thankfully now he is locked up for life, so we probably never see him again. But and I mean, I never I had a pedophile come into my business in the early 70s, and he went out quicker than he came in. Of course, I had his attorney wanted to sue me and all kinds of stuff. But that guy fit all the classic, everything I'd ever learned about pedophiles. Because you come into my business, I keep an eye out for your safety. And, but this guy, I thought at best he was a cross-dresser or a big cook. He did not fit any of the normal stuff I've ever seen or heard or read. And I was just like, holy God. Yeah, even our eight-time convicted felon that I like, he was helping a friend, I mean, the guy's just like a human forklift. He's helping a friend of mine doing a heating, air conditioning install up on a business building. 
when Terry got over there, he didn't realize that, uh, oh my God, this is a bank. You know, I am a convicted felon. They might not want me in here. It's like, well, we're outside. It's okay. But I mean, here's our eight-time convicted felon had the integrity to warn Marlo that if this is a problem, we, you know, we got to get you somebody else. And here I got this other clown didn't even think to tell me little things like, hey, I could destroy your business and get us arrested if we get pulled over. You know, God, that was amazing times. Anyway, we got more mugs now. We got any more questions? Come on, be brave. I don't bite. Yeah, Oren's got a question. Yes, sir. So have you seen any uptick in business since you got your new sign? Uh, well, see, everything, it's just been, you know, strange. I mean, every time, like in the last uh, 14 years or something, every time I see light at the end of the tunnel, it's like a train coming at me. And last year, I had the freeway east of me closed for 10 months. So people would have trouble getting in or couldn't get in because of traffic uh, patterns and stuff. You know, I lose a customer. It's tough replacing them. And kind of got through that okay. I mean, it was, it was not pretty. Right after that, the landlord, after 47 years or something, decides to tear off all the wood shingles and put up all new signage. Because I had a nice sign, but when you got down to the other end of the building, they look like ghetto signs, hand-painted and everything else. And it all looks real pretty and stuff. I can't say that I've really seen an uptick because of that you know, freeway closing. And I had a mediocre winter. It was okay, but not where it should have been. Now, I had to kind of a good summer, but now October is just, you know, well, for cold and rainy, has been nowhere where it should be. So, I mean, it's just all over the map right now, so I can't really honestly say if the, you know, new signage helped or not. I mean, just, you know, the facelift on the front after all these years and get rid of all the ghetto signs and stuff, sure as heck didn't hurt anything. Yeah. We already got him. Uh-oh. There's Gary Flower. Everybody say hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. Okay, sit down and shut up. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. I, I was just... <laughs> Nobody likes Gary. Just kind of curious. I mean, through your years, would you say? Hey, Gary, Gary get back here. We got to give you a prize. Uh, come, on, Gary. come on, you're okay. Did you have a question? Sure. Oh, just just one second. I, I thought you were just kidding around over there. Just let let me get this guy. I'm sorry, Gary. We'll get you a mug. Yes, sir. With the advancements in pinball and definitely its growth, would you say the demographic, the, the age demographic of your clientele now is going down? Younger people? Well, or is it see, here's possible? here's a problem too. I could not give you a, a, a you know worldwide you know view of that because no, but I mean you know I've been here so many years. I get a big age spread on people. You know, I get people come in that have been coming in there since before I had the place. I get people older than me. I get people younger. Generally, you don't see the younger kids. You know, they're all texting. You know, when I was growing up, there's toy trains and dolls. You know, kids that grew up in the uh, video fad days or into the arcade games and uh, game rooms in their basement. Hey, kids today are texting and stuff. It's not that they're not into pinball. It's just not what they're into. So I, I typically don't get the afternoon, you know, after school crowd or anything. Or, you know, usually when you see younger people, they're coming in with parents. So, so the people playing the pinball machines, you don't find, you know, it's, it's mostly us old pin side RGP people? Pretty much, at least my, my experience for me. Now, somewhere else might be different, but my experience has been it's generally a little bit older crowd. You know, probably mid to late 20s and higher. Did you want a mug or a shirt? I, I, you gave me a mug already, I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, darn. Gary. Hi there. Hi, Gary. Everybody say hi, Gary. Gary, you're still with Stern, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Everybody say hi, Gary. Hi, it's Gary Flower. I love giving him crap, but he's really a great guy. Back in, uh, I don't know, eight years ago, um, when I moderated at the first Jersey Jack um, fireside chat, someone afterwards went over to Jersey Jack and asked, why did they let me moderate when I worked for Stern? and kind of all hell broke loose, because of course I don't work for Stern. I live in England. It's a hell mm -hmm. of a journey into work every day if I from there. So I just thought I'd share that with you. It's one of the uh, uh, stories about my appearances at Expo over the last 34 years. Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not in charge of Expo. I don't know why you got picked as moderator. I remember at the time, I don't remember the exact, I don't even think I went to the seminar. I'm trying to think, but I know after afterwards there there was some flack. 
And I know next the next year Mike had approached, uh, or maybe it's Rob Burke. Maybe well, it was Mike. well, Mike approached me and tried to throw me out of the show yeah. because I hadn't told him that I worked for Stern. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I'm not. I think everything is kind of okay, but I remember there was some flack. Hey, everybody, say hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Uh, I remember there was some flack, and then the next year, uh, I think it was Mike sent Jack an email. Want to know if you wanted Gary Flowers moderator again? He said, "I want Lloyd." So that was I was a moderator that year. Oh, good. And which was kind of fun. And then the second year, the next year, he wanted me as moderator again, and I gave the introduction, gave him the microphone. I never had anything to say the rest yeah. of the time, so yeah. I just. I think ever but, since then he's done the job himself. Yeah, and I, you know, and I always like to try to be honest up front. Like on pin side, you know, I've got the JJP on my thing because I don't have room for CJC and PPS and stuff on there. But I always like to let people know where my, you know, thinking, posting, opinion, anything, where it's coming from. And now whether anybody, and I remember at the time there was some flack about it, but again, I was just wasn't, you know, firsthand privy knowledge to it or anything, and, you know. Any, anything that didn't go as planned, I am sorry, because you are a great guy, you're great in the industry, you got a big history in the industry. I love giving you shit, but you know, you've been around forever, because like, same with the multimorphic uh, thing, uh, when you're over in that seminar down in Texas here a couple, what, two, three years ago, but you know, you've been around for forever, and uh, you know, people weren't happy, I don't know what happened or whatever, but I, I am sorry, because you surely des deserve better than that, but. Well, I, it would have been nice if someone asked me if there was any truth in it, that's all. I just, I never really give a shit either yeah. way. You know, because like, like I say, it, uh, I don't even remember if I, I remember like right after there was some flack, I think I was out talking to Drew Maskello at that time, I don't even think I was at that seminar. But uh, I, I remember there was some scuttlebutt briefly after, but I, I just didn't pay that much attention to it, good or bad. Anyway, we've moved on from there. But anyway, you, you know, you're tr a tremendous asset to pinball and everything else, and. Uh, me on. I'm sorry if anything as, bad, bad. As are you. I'm sorry? As are you. Martin keeps, every time I try and get the microphone, he pulls it back. He's, he's a big tease. I've heard him before. <laughs> I did oh, not say I, asshole. What do you mean you? I'm an asshole? <laughs> I know that. You don't have to tell everybody. No, I've just, I've always been trying to be low-key and underplay things. Like I say, I just want to make my little corner of pinball better. This is like late night with Letterman. Because, you know, nobody lives forever. There's going to be a day where I'm gone. And I just, you know, like if anybody at some point that, you know, I helped you fix a machine or figured out where you could get information to fix a game or you game them. I just hope that whatever, you know, I left a little, just a little tiny bit, pinball was a little bit better because I'd gone before. Right. I mean, I'm not that's what looking to be a hero or fan. Like the LTG and stuff. I mean, anything I do always blossoms and blooms and gets out of hand quick. And I never wanted that. I just, just wanted to make a little bit of pinball a little bit better. So, Gary, would you like a mug or a shirt? I'll go with the shirt. Oh, no, our last shirt. Well, I'm, I'm not sure. See, me and Mike had something worked out in case we ever got in trouble. Thank you, Gary. Thanks for all you do. No, me and Mike had something worked out because we weren't supposed to have beer here, and I don't know if Rob Burke, I, I didn't even ask him. But see, if we ever got in trouble, you know, Mike could come storming in. You know, what in the hell are you doing tonight? You know, with the hotel uh, people in tow, and I'd be, it was a private party. I didn't know. <laughs> and of course, three hours later, we'd be laughing about it. But see, I don't know if Rob Burke could do that or not. And then last year, uh, you know, I did remember beer, but I didn't get ice. But I was thinking this year, we better wait and see that, uh, you know, how things go. I don't want to get, you know, get me in trouble, especially if I get thrown under the bus or anything, because I don't know if Rob Burke's got Mike's personality for, uh, yelling and screaming and not meaning it <laughs> easily. I mean, sometimes he means it, sometimes he don't, but I mean, we had that worked out ahead of time in case we ever got in trouble so he wouldn't get one of them $1,000 fines or something. Oh, that's why I brought the garbage bags and stuff so I could sneak it in here. <laughs> Uh-oh. Let's see. Have have you made plans what's going to happen to SS Billiards when you decide to hang up your cue stick? It's gone. I'm there till I die. License is probably not transferable. Lease is probably not transferable. It's gone. 
That's why I was said, there's one of these, uh, I think it's more of a video game uh, convention, and they're like meet two, three times a year, and they were in Minneapolis a few years ago, and they wanted me down there as a speaker because they've started adding pinball to it, but they raise like, you know, a million and a half dollars for charity with these contests and stuff that are going on, and somebody had asked that same thing, and they said, well, that's too bad, and I was like, too bad, I'm going to be fucking dead. What the hell do I care about too bad? I'm not going to be here. <laughs> So that was my one and only time there, but it was fun. They wanted me to talk for 20 minutes. Of course, an hour and a half later, we're still telling dirty jokes, having a great time, but. Anyway, would you like a mug, sir? Because we're out of shirts. Pardon? I'm good, thanks. I know you're good. I mean, I've heard the rumors. You know, women are talking out in the hall and everything, but do you want a mug? No, thank you. You don't want one of, but look. See, you see this side. You haven't seen the other side. Well, this is the one that you can show people. It says, I officially got mugged. <laughs> Sold. They're five bucks each. Yeah, it's getting pretty good when I can't even give shit away. <laughs> I still like some years ago on my seminars, uh, somebody won something. They sent their little girl up there. And she's looking at it. Don't you have anything better? I was like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> Jesus. That was when I had translates also. We had a lot of neat stuff donated that year, and I said, don't, don't you have something better? Yes, sir. Has it ever gotten so bad that you considered shutting down the industry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about twice a day. No, no uh, you know, during the mid-2000s stuff, I was selling everything. It wasn't nailed down. Just, it's pretty much, I mean, I left the house going everything because, you know, the business is where I get food. That comes first. I mean, if I was younger and had money and could go do anything else, you know, believe me, I would have done that you know, like 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And I never dreamt of being there so many years. You know, the average life of a game room then was a year and a half, two years, which was the guy that had opened it was going to sell it or close at the end of his lease. I never dreamt of being there five years, 10 years, 20 years. And, uh, but, yeah, the, I, well, and also, too, I never wanted to get into redemption. That's kitty gambling. It's dirty money. But like in 2005, 2006, I don't know how many times I'm sitting there thinking that how many redemption games I could get with the close, getting these pinballs out of here. So, you know, we had different things through the years. You know, at air hockey was big. Football was big. The little video fad thing. Then the video fad. And we have not had something new for too long. And I always keep them hoping to stick out until that something new comes along. But... Coin op is dead. I think, you know, like at one time in Minnesota, it's like 300, or in Minneapolis, there's over 300 operators alone in the city of Minneapolis near me. There's like 30 operators in the state right now. I mean, I don't think there's anything new coming along anymore. Did you want a mugger? Oh, we can't give him a shirt. We got this really cool cardboard things that you can hang on your wall or you can have a mug. Ooh, another mug customer. I will have my trusty helper, Robert, deliver that for you. You can't have the one I'm spitting in. Yeah, Oren got that one. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, I thought we were going to do it for the, the book and the chapters that can't be put in until later. <laughs> oh, there's there's been... I, I, I've, I've done some stupid things through the years, and I've always been a kind of person, I don't get even, I get ahead. And I've been chastised about this through the years. In fact, Jack, when I was out in New Jersey for training, had brought up a few things he heard of, and I was like, you know, you wave that cape in front of the bull three, four times, eventually that some bitch charges. And I will, myself personally, I will put up with a lot of stuff. You don't fuck with a friend of mine, and if you screw with how I'm making a living, man, you are fair game. I got no problem putting you in the ground. Oh, we had another question. Is there a story behind the LTG and the duck symbol on your pin side? That's a goose. If you want to win quality prizes here, get this shit right. No, uh, again, anytime I do shit, it gets out of hand. You know, many years ago, mid-70s, the first video games, they didn't have battery backup to keep high scores. And right about that time, uh, one time I had made up T-shirts with... You know, somebody accused me of having my own army, so I had Lloyd's Army uh, on the back of the shirt. It's really cool. Well, when I would uh, unplug a game and uh, fix it, repair it, or whatever, when you, plug the, when you turn the games on in the morning, all the scores would be zero. 
And so when I would, you know, fix a joystick or do this or do that, turn the game off, go in there. Because like a good person, I don't work on stuff when it's turned on. But anyway, uh, well, then I'd play a game on it to see if I fixed it. Well, I'd automatically get high score. Whee! And of course, Helen Keller could come in and play it next and beat me. And somewhere along the line, I started putting in LTG. Because at that time, it was pre-internet, and people couldn't do the research and stuff like they do now. I go to work with money. I leave with money. I don't want people knowing my last name. I don't want people knowing where I live. I never go the same way home twice, things like that. And I didn't want them knowing my last name. And I started using LTG for Lloyd the Great. And it, got, it was a huge gag for years. You know, people look at that. What's your middle name? The. And then when I got my web TV thing, when I discovered Rec Games Pinball, people were signing. They'd, they'd have their cute little signature, signature lines, like the cheap-ass Rec Game Pinball Bastards would have their thing. And uh, you know, different guys would have initials and different stuff. And I started using the LTG and, and a little smiley, because a lot of days are not great days. And I hope whoever's reading this has a better day than me. And of course, again, it gets a life of its own. And uh, in the winter of 2000, 2001, uh, Every once in a while, I'd come up on Rec Games Pinball, people would be, what does the LTG mean? And it, they, they, there'd be 30 to 40, you know, lost the game, loves Thai girls, little tiny gonads. I mean, it just go on and on and on. Well, in the winter, that winter, I had some older pool shooters used to come in. I don't know what the hell they were doing one day, but they were shooting pool, and all of a sudden, across the room, they're screaming, let loose the ducks. God, what the hell? Well, this was the same second that David Jersick posted on one of these things on uh, Rec Games Pinball, it stands for Launch Those Geese. I thought, shit, that ain't bad. In the, my first pinball party in uh, March 2nd, 2001 was the Launch Those Geese Pinball Party. So that, and like I say, anything I do just gets out of hand, it gets a lot. I look for KISS updates, I end up in Kiev. I mean, I, I just, I've learned through the years, I don't ask why, I don't question it, I just go with it. But anyway, that's where that all came from. And, uh, you know, and Martin's got a write-up on Pinside on, uh, I think when I made my 50,000th post on Rec Games Pinball, uh, Martin's got an article on there, and I think that's covered in there. Which also, too, that was not quite accurate because I'd been posting from a couple different email addresses prior to that, so I'd already hit the 50,000 mark. Did you want a mug or a mug? I guess that guy wants a mug. Yes, sir. Uh, not really. Uh, th I, the only thing I've really got in storage right now, there was a gentleman, I don't know uh, how many years ago, his name was Curtis uh, Prouse, I think, Prouse. And uh, he, he worked for an operator in the mid-70s. Uh, he went to a technical college. He did a three-year electronics course or something in two years. Guy was a genius. And uh, if you research his name, I'm, I'm probably getting it wrong. I'd have to look it up again. But if you research his name, he held, a, he invented a lot of stuff that IBM in Rochester, Minnesota patented and stuff. And he had took a ship ahoy and converted it to solid state two years ahead of Bally's Flicker. Bally had a whole company working on this. This guy did it himself. And it ended up, uh, I don't know, he'd, uh, he died young. Uh, geez, I've had that thing over a decade. Uh, it was basically, I think he'd probably gotten sick and it was down in the basement of his house and after he passed, you know, somebody had sold off the contents of the house. And Kevin Pankratz, uh, somebody had called him, you know anything, you want this pinball machine? So he right away wanted to find it a good home and I thought, you know, geez, that'd be kind of cool if we could get it running and uh, use it for one of the events. And it does need a lot of work. The uh, side art on a cabinet was just rotted and gone. Play fields in similar shape. But, you know, this guy had taken out all the salt, the mechanical stuff and made, a, you know, I've got a folder with all the programming and stuff. He made, like I say, two years ahead of Bally's Flicker. This, this guy was amazing. And it needs a lot of work. All the Jones plugs got to be replaced, all kinds of stuff. But for one of the events, we did have it fired up and we had it running for three, four hours. And that thing read switches and stuff just like a modern day pinball. You know, Bally put the capacitors on there and stuff so it'd read the switches quicker. This thing, played like a new game. And it had a, you know, he had a hand-painted backlash with the pirate girls on there. Well, originally they were nude, 
But his mother disapproved of that, so they ended up with bikinis on him. But it's it's really a unique unique piece. And again, if it hadn't been that you know this lady, whoever was cleaning the house out, knew Kevin. Otherwise, this thing would have been in a dumpster. Nobody had ever even known this guy lived. And it kind of makes me wonder, geez, how many of the others lone wolves are out there that uh, you know had built something or designed something or you know that uh, you know we'll just never know of. Even like right now, I know at one point there's two different guys working on Capcom books. As far as I know, those projects are dead. And you know, day by day, these guys are getting older and dying off. We're losing just tons of uh, stories and information. And so, do you want a mug or a mug? Oh, another mug customer. We got how many? We got left. Ooh, we got at least five more questions before we get desperate. Yeah, while you're out there, grab one that somebody ain't watching. Come on, the night's young. We got to have some stimulating. Uh... Yes, sir. Have you ever had a machine literally just fall apart? No, I had one. I could not uh, fall apart. My Mach 3, I had the LaserDeck rebuilt. It was like 1200 bucks, and usually they warranty them for 90 days, and usually you get about a year out of it. Well, 33 days it died. So I take it in to get it repaired under warranty. Oh, we only warranty them for 30 days now. You know, thanks for telling me. I'm not going to put 1200 bucks into some for 30 days. And this thing was double sheathed. It was a sit-down Mach, uh, well, it's got lead, Milestar Premier, whatever. I think it was Milestar then. Double sheathed, three quarter inch plywood, glued, screwed, nailed. I mean, this thing, I was debating hauling it on the freeway to see if somebody had run into it. I was in there with a sledgehammer pounding on this thing for a half an hour. I knocked some trim, trim off in front of where the monitor sat. And I finally got a 10 inch uh, commercial grade, 10 inch uh, handsaw, you know, <laughs> cut it into chunks small enough I could lug them out and throw them in a dumpster. So I, I haven't had one fall apart, but I've, that one really needed some help going bye-bye. <laughs> you already got a mug, didn't you? No, you already got a mug. Any more questions? How about that lady in the green? He, well, you're back there talking to a guy. What are you talking about? Uh, I was wondering if you still have your dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Prada is staying with Jonathan and Liz this uh, weekend. They've babysat her off and on through the years. Their little dog, I even sadly passed quite some time ago. And they stopped in a couple months ago that, uh, you know, we're empty nesters now. If you ever need anybody watching a dog, we'd love to watch. And they are they're two people that if something happened to me, I'd want them to have Prada. They would take better care of than I can. And they're really sweethearts. And Ivan was a great dog, too. The only problem they ever had with Ivan one day, uh, they'd left, they'd gone somewhere and they had the Roomba running around, and Ivan got scared and pooped, and the Roomba dragged it all over the house. <laughs> and, and I still laugh. They don't think it was funny, but this, this is always great when it happened to somebody else. <laughs> Did you want a mug or a... Yeah, that's all we got left is mugs. Yep, better give her a mug. Hey, do you want to talk about Pinport some more? Who's our next sacrificial lamb? Jared. I gotta think, what did I get inducted into last year? I got that major award. I don't know if that was the Pinball Hall of Fame, though. I think it was sales and service. Yeah, it was for support. Sure. Yeah, that, that was funny, too. Uh, you know, last year, the Saturday when I had the banquet, it rained all day. So I'm at the big lunch at, uh, at the restaurant over here with uh, Joe Harper and all the uh, big wheels from uh, Jersey Jack Pinball and stuff. We're all talking. And uh, all of a sudden, my cell phone goes off. And it was my buddy, Bob May, him and, him and Robert had already flown out. He's like, God, like, go up and reserve me a room again. You know, the flights are getting canceled. And if everybody comes back, you might not be able to get a room. So I run up and I, uh, you know, got, got their room and went back. What the hell? How did this start? What were you asking? Oh, if I got, oh, anyway, uh, earlier in the day, Mike Pasek had given, he, he asked me, do you have a banquet ticket? And I found a person that had an extra, and I was like, yeah, I got a banquet ticket. He didn't say anything about wanting me there or anything. He just wanted to be sure I had a banquet ticket. Because, you know, when they were like 80 bucks, I ain't, you know, I'm not having an $80 meal. I'm sorry. I mean, you know, a lot of people love the banquet and everything else. I just, it's not something I can normally afford. But uh, Ross Simpson had two tickets, and him and his wife weren't going, so he gave me one of his tickets, so I got to go. But anyway, because of all the flights getting canceled and stuff, 
uh, Bob wants to go over to the restaurant. We're having a nice dinner. And I thought, well, that beats the hell out of the banquet uh, buffet. So I'm over there. All of a sudden, Steve Zamanowski comes in. He said, man, you got to get up to the banquet. You're getting a major award. And I'm like, I'm getting a leg lamp? <laughs> I'm like, cool. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, they couldn't find me. Mike called Jack. Jack was already back in New Jersey, so Jack called uh, Steve to come find me. So I go running up there, and then I got to sit for an hour, and then I get called up for the major award. And again, I'm saying, I thought I was getting a leg lamp. You know, I get this plaque for years of service or something. And I mean, which was really cool, and I appreciate it. And plus, the last year of Expo with uh, Rob Burke and Mike signing and stuff. And you know, I got it in my display case right now. And you know, it was really cool, but I didn't even think about the Pinball Hall of Fame. Yeah, I don't deserve to be in there. No, but I'm thinking of all the no, 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 no. But I'm thinking of all the great names of Steve Cordix, Alvin Gottlieb's, uh, all the those people belong there. And the whole scheme of things, I'm a pimple on the face of the earth. Yeah, but see, I've I've always tried to avoid that. I didn't want people knowing who I was or the fame or the glory or, and of course, some of this is funny too. Like a few years ago, down to Texas. Uh, when uh, Texas Pinball Festival, and you got 400 games going, you can't hear anything. My cell phone had uh, rang, but I didn't hear it. Well, they had a stuck ball on uh, Wizard of Oz. Well, Butch Peel happened, he was just there, and he had a key, so he unsticks it. Well, there's a guy and lady waiting until he unsticks the ball and he closes up, and they're like, wow, this, is, this guy is just amazing. This guy has helped more people. He's just, a, and Butch is just, oh my God, I didn't notice anybody notice me. And this guy is just well-known, he's respected and going on, and Butch is just getting more and more and more, and they said, this is LTG. And Butch is like. <laughs> and then, of course, the rest of Texas, I was calling him Lloyd, but. No, I've, I've just, I don't want the fame, I don't want the glory. I mean, if I'd known, you know, when I made my first post on uh, Rec Games Pinball, you know, 1996 or something, if I'd known how this was going to go, I probably wouldn't have done it. I just, I just want to make, make my little pinball, corner of pinball a little bit better. You know, and years later, somebody, you know, my game's working, Lloyd helped me, you know, that's cool, but I don't want the fame and glory. I mean, I appreciate the kind words. I think people, I, I'm really appreciated that the people think I belong there and stuff, but there's just more important people that belong there than me. Can I ask you another question? Please. Where's Total Recall? Who has it? I know you know who has it. Tell me who has it, Lloyd. I need to know. Where is it? It's someone in Chicago. Where is it? Who's house is it at? What the hell is Total Recall? Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, I, I forgot. Yeah, that was the one that they, they uh, got in trouble with and all kinds of stuff. And potentially one of them got sold, and it was to a guy on Pinside, and he deleted his account. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and to, yeah, I've, I've ne I, I never cared. I never dug. I never asked. I don't even remember what that guy's name was. Oh, you guys don't know what I'm talking about? No, It was a, a game that... Well, you probably know more than I do because I just didn't follow along that much until it all blew up. There's a prototype called Total Recall from 1993. A Data, Data East prototype. Oren might know about it. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. It, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It has uh, two, two conjoined pinball machines that share an upper play field. So you have two totally separate play fields, a left player and a right player, that could play simultaneously, sort of joust style, but instead of head-to-head, -head, it's side-by-side. And so imagine sort of two pinball machines configured in a V configuration that had a special type of glass on it that allowed the top of the play field of the two machines to be shared. And each player had, had a, a way to knock balls down to the other player. And it was called Total Recall. The back glass artwork and some other artwork was finished. It had uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was popular in pinball machines back then. And, uh, and the machine, of course, was very complex, very odd. And uh, they decided to never make it. So for years it sat at Data East and Sega, um, and um, one day it just disappeared, and no one there, not Gary, not nobody, not Shelly Sachs, nobody knows exactly where, who took it or where it went or what's up with that. And then the last confirmed sighting we have of the game was actually here at the Pinball Expo some maybe eight or nine years ago. But again, and it, this is 
pretty recent, eight or nine years, but no one remembers who brought it, whose truck it came out of, whose truck it went into, or if the guy who brought it was the owner, or if it left with a different guy, and no one's ever seen it since. There's no high resolution photos of it. There's virtually no video of it, and almost no, no one knows anything about it, and it might be one of the rarest pinball machines in the world, and yeah. I want to know where the heck it's at. Yeah, Jared, I apologize. I have no idea. I mean, beyond a couple of the uh, like line drawings or something I've seen, when you were at first asking about that, I was confusing it with the first Predator prototype that oh. should not have been sold and was, and I don't know how that ever all ended up, but I was thinking of that. I do yeah. apologize. I, I've got no idea on total So recall. if you guys don't know, there's a black market uh, or I should say a gray market mm -hmm. for prototypes and high, super high-end pinball collectors who don't want you to know who they are or that they exist or what they have or where their house is. I went to a warehouse in Anaheim once. I probably shouldn't even say that, but I went there and there's probably 250 machines in this unmarked warehouse and it isn't a guy you'd ever see or know or would have ever heard of, and, but there they were right there on the side of the road in a, right in there in a warehouse. And he had prototypes and all kinds of stuff in there like you wouldn't believe. And he's probably a, a member of a, of a global network of super high-end rare collectors like this. And they're right under your nose. They might even be walking in this building, but they'll never tell you what they well, have. One is here. Huh? One is okay, here Okay, probably at in this room, I bet. So, it, you know. Not, not in this room, but here but, at Expo. But these guys, they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know what they have or what's going on. And they trade all this stuff under the table. So, you know, you, you hear about a game like Mad, like Mad Pinball, or you hear about these Predator prototypes or some of these other different prototypes, Whitewoods, Playfield, stuff like that, all that stuff gets traded and just disappears. And it's wacky and weird, but it's real. And I am particularly interested in Total Recall, and I, I need to find it. I will find it. If I, if I ever hear anything, Jared, I'll tell you. You have some info? Okay. Really? That was only five years ago. No, it would have already been gone by then. You're telling me you put that prototype in a dumpster, you saw it yourself. It was also never picked up by the people who clean out the dumpsters. Oren knows stuff. Oren knows secrets. He knows all kinds of stuff. This is great. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 it's, it's an interesting part. It's nice it's brought up. I don't know. Well, it's amazing how much this stuff pops up. I know one guy out in California, he invited me out to his place. Not the normal one everybody thinks of. This is a lone wolf. And he's got a beach house. He said, you ever come out here? You can stay there. We never use it anymore. On the Pacific Ocean. But he was sending me pictures of his setup one time. And best I could tell from the pictures, it's like a square city block, two stories tall. The main floor, he's got a full-size ballroom, a soda fountain shop, and probably 90 to 100 of the old mechanical driving games, shooting games, fighting games stuff. Upstairs, he's got like 200 to 300 pinball machines. Nope. And the nicest guy in the world, too. And I don't begrudge him anything, but when I first saw him pictures, I was like, I want a job like that guy's got. It is amazing how every once in a while, like I had a guy out in uh, out east uh, got in an argument with some people on Red Games Pinball, but he sent me a couple of pictures one time, and he had you know arcade games and uh, pinball machines, and he had well over five or 600 games in a building. And they were all up and running in uh, you know, nice shape, and I was like, nobody knows this. And then the sad part, uh, 
you know, I wish, uh, you know, I don't blame a guy for being a lone wolf. I don't blame, you know, it's his stuff. He can do whatever he wants. I don't blame him for being secret or being paranoid about it. But I always worry, too, what if something happens to him? What happens to this? I remember uh, I've always been in the trains, and there was a guy in the uh, late 50s, early 1960s, had a trap rock company in, uh, I think it was in Alabama. And when the railroads were converting to diesel, he would he ended up owning about 30 real railroad steam engines. And he had a lot of them where a railroad had to have a certain class of engine and they'd scrap them all, but one, he'd have the one. You know, most of the engines he had were the last of their that class. And he used to give people rides on the land and stuff, well, then somebody stole a builder plate and he didn't let people out there for a few years. But then he started relenting and would let people uh, tour it and he'd give a few rides. Guy drops dead young. And was, this was before the days of the internet and instant communication and everything else. Relatives sold it all for scrap. It was all cut up and gone in less than a month. Museums weren't given a chance to buy it or anything. Bought a cent and a half a pound. And that's why I always worry that some of these lone wolves and stuff out here that have some of this rare stuff and nobody knows about, you know, oh, like that ship Ahoy I had, you know, that just happened to one person at the right place at the right time, that thing would have been in a dumpster. So I wish there'd be a way of getting more out, but you know it's just it's their stuff, and and I wish they'd you know leave a map or notes or leave it to somebody that appreciates. Well, like my goose sign, my neon goose sign, you know, and I'm dead and gone. I hope somebody gets it, appreciates it, not that it ends up in a dump somewhere. You know, so like I got the video, video. Uh, There's no guarantee. Anything you sign or write, somebody's gonna use it against you. I mean, you could try to will it to somebody, but there's no guarantee, and I'm not going to be here to do anything about it. But like on my back wall, I got that big neon pinball pinball sign. That came from Video Video, New Jersey, Ron Salney's place. And when that closed, uh, that went into storage. And we just happened to be talking about uh, names for arcades and stuff at that time. And I always thought it'd be cool to, you know, because a lot of these people, you know, they, when they want to, you know, open an arcade or something and call it Tilt or Lost Ball. I mean, the average Joe Average, most of the stuff, people wouldn't know what it is. But he always thought Pinball Pinball would be a cool name, and I did too, because you know it clearly spells out. You got Pinball, and he emailed me. He said, well, I got that sign if you want it. The only thing, he didn't want to ship it, because even the guys that know how to ship Neon, they got like a 50% breakage rate. But he said, if you can find a way to pick it up, you can have it. Well, somebody brought it to Expo, and then Andrew Barney brought it uh, to me in, in Twin Cities, and the next day I cleaned off the back wall, and mounted on the wall, and sent Ron a picture of it. But the same thing, and I got a little plaque on a wall of where it was and hung and stuff. It was a memorial to, you know, at one time for about a decade, it was a really good, great place to, to play pinball. Do we have any more questions? Hey, there's guys talking back there. Hey, we're losing people. Where are you going? Hey, you guys talking back there. What's your question? Don't be bashful. You're sitting there talking. I'm sorry? Oh, it's Joe Esposito. Hey, we got a mug left? We got three. Four. We got three. Give, give Joe. Yeah, th this is Joe Esposito. I call him the guinea from Joyzy, but he's really from Philly. He's like he's right out of the cast of The Sopranos. He's the greatest guy you're ever going to meet. Yeah, we got to give him a mug. Yeah, one of my tournaments one time, hmm? Yeah. Yeah, one of my tournaments one day, he wanted to come over and play in a Mayday tournament in the worst way. And uh, he had relatives at the house and kids and everything, and he couldn't get out. Couldn't, he's finally, I want to play fucking pinball. I'm going to play fucking pinball. And he comes, well, it's too late to enter anything. And my front row of pins, he just starts lining up strangers. You know, I come to play fuck, fuck, fuck a pinball. We're playing pinball. He started his own tournament while I had a tournament going on. And it was one of the funny, and that was for years I had the crazy Joe Esposito tournament in, during the pinball circus and stuff, and that's Joe right there. Everybody say hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. He's one of the greatest guys. He's been around forever, but he is, he's hilarious. He's a really funny guy. Yeah, Brian Kelly, everybody, he just started lining people up, started his own tournaments, one of the greatest things ever happened. I mean, that's right, you know, I go with stuff, you know, that, hey, these guys had a blast. We'll do that. What well, we got, two mugs left? Three. three mugs, we need three questions. Jared, how would you like, oh, hey, did you still want a mug for your buddy in Australia? 
Five bucks. Uh, give, give him a mug for his friend in Australia that couldn't be here. You look like you're going to burst, Jared. Did you have another question? I don't know. I can't decide. Oh, Martin, could you turn that off for a few minutes? Well, he does work for a manufacturer, and, you know, and I've said some bad things to Jared through the years that he probably wants to kill me, and there's some things that probably shouldn't be recorded, so could you turn that off briefly, please? Well, you look like you're going to burst. I thought you had a question. Yeah, we just got to ask Oren which dumpster. Yes, sir. I, I think it's like all things. All people are different. Some of these guys do open up their places to uh, strangers or friends or family, and some of them you wouldn't know for the love of God. I mean, I, I don't know that it's always paranoia. It's just that uh, people are people. Some people are, uh, you know, used to having people around, having big parties, family get-togethers. And some people just don't like being around people. Like my buddy Marshall, he just hates people. You know, every year the, the, the apartments they rent, they got like a home theater type thing set up and you can reserve it. Every year he reserves it for the Super Bowl so that he's the only one sitting in there watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> That's not paranoia. He just don't like people. And, uh, and he's a great guy. He's huge, too. He's got an extra vertebrae, so he's, like, really big. But he just don't like people. Likes me, I don't know. But I'm a people person. Everybody likes me, except for the guys that don't like me. Yeah. But see, some of these, there, there are clues. See, pinballs don't really leave clues. Like I know I've had guys that collect cars and stuff. They're forever driving around the country on the weekends looking for, uh, you know, like tire tracks going back to an old decrepit building or something. And they'll go peek in a window and see if a car got abandoned there and stuff. And see, there's no really telltale. Uh, now, I have, like when people were looking for Lionel trains and stuff, they even went as far as researching the Lionel archives for things that had been sent for service and sent back, and they'd have names and addresses. And a lot of times, people are looking for these stashes of operators. Well, like during the video fed, there was one operator in our Red Wing. The game broke. He just threw it where else, put another one out. He didn't even have time to fix them. He's hauling in so much money. Well, then all of a sudden, 20 years goes by, and this stuff is gold. Unfortunately, he then discovered that, and he started selling for more money. But like I told people, you know, find your phone books from the 70s and the early 80s. Look for under amusement devices, arcades, you know, known words, and, you know, call some of the old ones up. You might find a relative, yeah, geez, I got 30 of them things in her garage. I want them out of here. It'd be nice if nothing else to rescue some of this stuff. And it's every time you see a picture of a metal building in a backyard rusted out and the roof collapsed and all the games trashed, I mean, it'd be nice if they could find a home with somebody to appreciate them. I mean, I realize we can't save everything, but it does hurt when you see, well, same if you see a rusted car uh, somewhere or, you know, think that, uh, you know, it's a shame that somebody didn't get a hold of that when it could have been used. We got two more, two more mugs, two more questions. Who didn't get a mug? Gary? You didn't get a mug? Oh. How the hell did we manage that? I, I remember something about that him want a shirt. You better give Gary a mug because we do love Gary. I, you know, when I was giving you crap too, I do apologize because I didn't mean to stir up old things. It had nothing to do with that. I just love giving you crap. Thanks, Gary. We got one mug left. Who didn't get a mug? What's your question? We got all night. There's got to be something you want to know. Even a personal question. You, the meaning of life? Well, it's pretty simple. It's always going to come down to big tits or a big dick. Nothing else matters. 
Okay, that guy earned a mug. <laughs> Just for that answer, he gets one. <laughs> Anybody else want some answers? Otherwise, you better come up with some questions. Otherwise, I think we've dragged this about as far as we can this year. And I do, I do want to thank everybody for coming. I do want to thank you for all the nice thoughts and words, and especially for, you know, like Jared and uh, Dave Marston and Gary uh, Norton and stuff, some of the guys who have done so much, and Martin for always helping and recording. And, you know, thank you, and I hope uh, we still got a little bit of Expo left and we got all of tomorrow left. I hope you have a really great Expo. And I forgot about that, too, because this is like the 35th year of Expo, even though there are changes, and hopefully in a positive fashion. And, you know, we all came together, and I hope we're all leaving as friends, and I hope you have a really great ex. Oh! I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Gary. So this is the 33rd year? 34th. 34th. Oh, okay. So we're in the 34th year. Okay. I have suck at math. I'm sorry. I pretty much suck at everything. Now we know math. But anyway, I mean, it's, it's had a long run, and hopefully it's on the upswing again and, uh, get, you know, gets back to the glory days. And, you know, like I say, we're all parting as friends, and I, I hope you have a great rest expo. Thank you.